Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Dustin Harris hanging out with you, another Appraiser Coach podcast. Boy, I tell you, we have had a dry spell with uh, without uh, the appraiser stories, and I love appraiser stories. I know the listeners do as well. I always watch the stats, and I know I say this a lot, but it always amazes me. You know, the appraiser stories was kind of an afterthought. Um, you know, I really wanted to get into how to improve your business, how to be effective and efficient as an appraiser. And I thought, you know, I wonder if appraisers would be interested in hearing about their peers across the nation. And so I did one or two, and I'll tell you, the stats just went through the roof. And every time I post one of these, uh, it always surprises me that uh, people are very interested in what other appraisers are doing across the country. And so I'm always appreciative of any appraiser who's willing to put themselves out there and just have a conversation uh, with me about their life, about their uh, their business business and their situation and what they have to say about the appraisal profession. Uh, I know I talk to a lot of appraisers who are very fearful <laughs> of that uh, situation, but I want you to know it is not difficult. It is not hard. Uh, we make it fun. And that's uh, so why I, I encourage anybody, please, please, please. I'm always looking for content. If you're interested in being on the show, please reach out to me at the coach at the appraiser coach.com, the coach at the appraiser coach.com. Before we jump in today's interview, I want to remind you that we are sponsored by working RE magazine folks working RE is the uh, print version and the digital version uh, that you can get online or in your mailbox. Go to working RE.com workingre.com. We're also sponsored by data master data master right now offering a 14 day free trial. You can, Try that right now for two weeks by going to datamasterfreetrial.com slash coach, datamasterfreetrial.com slash coach. And finally, we are sponsored by Alamode. Alamode is uh, the software that I've been using for over 20 years, and they've been in business for over 30. It's alamode.com slash free trial. Once again, alamode.com slash free trial. Well, folks, uh, set this up in the beginning. We have another appraiser stories uh, interview for you today where we get to learn about one of your peers from uh, across this fruited plain. Have with me, Mr. Jason Self is uh, with me today. Welcome to the program, Jason. Thank you, Dustin. Glad to be here. I really, really appreciate you being on. Uh, you and I uh, go back quite a ways. I know we've communicated uh, at least via social, social media for a while, uh, email and and that kind of thing. I know you've been on my Facebook group for, for quite a while, and uh, but I'm, I'm excited to get to know you, my friend. So for the listeners, where are you from? I'm from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is the little barrier chain off the coast of North Carolina. Oh. Um, it's an interesting place to live, it's, you know, resort area. So Very know, during nice. the summer, we've got a lot of people, and during the winter, we don't. <laughs> I'll bet, I'll bet. So I assume you do a lot of high-end properties there, uh, maybe on the, on the beachfront, right? I do. I do a lot of uh, ocean front and, you know, semi ocean front and, you know, houses that have eight bedrooms and, you know, six, wow. seven, eight thousand square feet are pretty typical jobs for me. And uh, it's, it's interesting. I get to yeah. see a lot of, a lot of big houses that I can't afford to live in. <laughs> exactly. I'm the same way, my friend. I see a lot. I can't of even afford to rent some of these things for the weekend. So <laughs> I hear you. So uh, let's start in the beginning. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, um, you know, what, uh, what caused you to get into this crazy world of appraising? Well, I'm from this area. You know, I, I grew up here. If, if we can make the stretch to say I've actually grown up, um, <laughs> but I became an adult here anyway. So we'll Legal. go with that. Um, Legally. Yeah. Right? Yeah, legally an adult. <laughs> um, went to college. Got a. I started off in college going to uh, aviation school. I wanted to be a, oh. a pilot, and you know, the school I went to kind of fell apart as soon as I got there. And I promise I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> <was gonna> say, <laughs> you know, so you know, ended up not getting a degree in aviation stuff, but I did get a pilot's license, oh. and then w went to uh, you know another school to pull up my GPA, and ended up with a degree in international business, and. Uh, after I graduated, I just sat down and I said, well, what exactly am I qualified to do? So, you know, I used to work on a boat. I can fly an airplane, got a degree in international business. I had to get a proficiency in Spanish to graduate with the international business degree. And really, the only thing I could think of that I was qualified to do was to be a smuggler. <laughs> and, well, that, and that really wasn't reasonable. To appraising. <laughs> yeah, that really wasn't a reasonable career option, but, uh, sure, sure. you know, so i just it's applied funny. around and ended up getting a, a job as an insurance adjuster. And that was not a real great job. I mean, I, I was helping. Why is that? I, I, I want to I pin you down on that a little bit because I've got uh, two friends that are uh, insurance adjusters and they are, they are quick to point out that our jobs are very similar in the sense that we drive around, we go to different appointments. Every, every, you know, every situation is new. Uh, it, it keeps things exciting. Um, tell me, tell there me. There is why. some overlap between uh, 
you know, being a, an appraiser and an adjuster. But when I deal with uh, people as an adjuster, they just had a really bad day. Mm. And, you know, they're, you know, insurance companies don't have great reputations. And I was the face of the insurance company that they were pretty sure I was trying to pull one over on them or get out of paying everything we owed. And, you know, people just kind of, they gave me a hard time a lot, you know, and I was there to help that checkbook that I carried around did not go to my bank account. Mm. So, you know, I was actually, I had the highest payout in the state when I was in insurance because, you know, I live here. This is my, these are my neighbors. I want to make sure they can rebuild their kitchen after it went on fire. And then there was times when, you know, I'd have to deal with a a real bad car accident and I'd have to call somebody after their Mm. kid died in an accident the night before. And I, I just, I did not like having to do that. That's something I never. I hear you. That's uh, yeah. That makes for a very so. So I decided I just didn't want to do that. And of course, my mother was a real estate appraiser, and I said, "Mom, I think you're going to teach me to be an appraiser." She said, "Oh no, I'm not." (laughs) I said, "Oh yes, you are." And we kind of argued back and forth, and uh, I won that argument. Luckily, it, it, it worked out. It worked out well. Good, you know, I worked good. with her for a few years, and then she decided she was going to retire. Oh. Uh, about the time the UAD stuff came came out, she said, "Well, I'm done with this." <laughs> <Good time. laughs> she yeah. said, "It's all you. I'm going home." Uh, so. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about your practice then: uh, commercial, residential only, or or what's your setup there? I'm just residential. Um, I, I I get a lot of the complicated jobs in the area. Um, I get a lot of calls, and people say, "Yeah, this appraiser gave me your number," and I'm thinking, "Uh oh." <laughs> It's like, what exactly do you have going on? But, yeah, exactly. You know, no, I can't handle it, but, but send it to Jason. He'll do anything, right? Sometimes, you know, you get the, the double wide that's on pilings with an illegal apartment that's waterfront, you know? Hey, I get those all the time. Yeah. <laughs> lots of comps for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, so yeah. you've talked a little bit about your area and you said that you do unique properties. I assume you do the standard uh, cookie cutters as well, right? Or, or maybe those don't exist where you're at. We have a few properties that we basically consider standard cookie cutters. We have what we call the beach box, which is, you know, elevated house. Mm -hmm. Uh, They start off being like 24 by 40 was the dimensions on them. And they were 24 by 40 because they did not have to cut a single piece of plywood. They just, you know, drill the pilings and start stacking everything. And a couple of weeks later, it's basically done. Yeah. You know, the problem with those is out where we, we live. This is where the Wright brothers flew the first airplane, just okay. in case you don't sure. remember the history lesson. But the Wright brothers came here because we have a lot of wind here. So you get these houses that are elevated on eight foot pilings. And when the wind starts rolling, those things rock. You feel like you're in a, a boat going back and forth. So, um, it's just interesting. <laughs> That's, uh, that makes for, uh, for a fun vacation, I guess. Um, so, oh, yeah. You've, you've brought up the Wright brothers. You brought up the fact that you're a pilot. I'm curious, does that ever, uh, does that ever cross over into what you do today? Do you ever use your pilot's license? Um, my pilot's license is actually uh, kind of inactive, oh. I'm not current. Um, I, I renewed it a few years ago after not flying for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Hmm. Went out, sat down with an instructor for about an hour, um, and he signed off. He's like, all right, you're good. I'm like, really? That's it? <laughs> I haven't flown for 10 years and you're just setting me free to go run into like whatever I, I want more to. Than my appraisal aside and you're, you're trusting me with this piece of equipment in the air. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I've, I don't know. That's not high on the priority right now. So, you know, the reason I maybe, ask, and maybe it's different on the East coast, but you know, there's so much open area here uh, in, in Idaho. I've, I've often thought, and, and you know, just a little bit about me. I, I actually started to get my pilot's license when I was a teenager as well in high school. And then, uh, you know, I was a teenager in high school, so I didn't have enough, uh, uh, you know, concentration on one thing. It was, you know, it was kind of squirrel and, and I was off doing something else, but uh, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very, the same way now. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. Well, I'm very interested in, in aeronautics and, in in you know, would not, um, would not be opposed to, you know, even this late in life going back and getting my pilot's license as well. But, you know, I, I often think, well, how could that, uh, how could I utilize that for what I do? And I'll tell you, there's a lot of use for that in, in the area that I'm in. Um, a lot of use for, uh, for getting uh, d- to different places that way. I, I've often been interested to find out, you know, how many appraisers out there actually use a pilot's license to help them in what they do uh, in, in the appraisal side of things. I think you need a helicopter. That way you don't have to find the, the <laughs> runway. You just sit down in somebody's backyard, and pull out the disto and 
that, <laughs> you know, go yeah. about your day. Yeah, That'd be the ideal way. Awesome. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. So, uh, so you've been doing this how many years? Um, since 2003. Okay. So you've been in this long years. enough to, uh, to have some experiences. Tell me about your most disturbing or scary encounter, Jason, as an, as an appraiser. You know, in my neighborhood, my, my market, we don't have a whole lot of, you know, we don't have a real high crime rate, you know, at least like violent crime, you know, our bad neighborhoods are pretty good neighborhoods as far as you know, all things considered. So I really haven't had that many scary encounters. Um, most of the time I was doing a construction inspection one day, walking around the back of a house and looked down and said, Oh my God, what is that? Is that a bear truck? And then I looked up and a, the biggest St. Bernard I've ever seen was like running towards me. And I'm thinking I'm going to get eaten. And he stopped yeah. and licked me in the face. I'm like, okay. You know, <laughs> and, you know, that was about it. You know, I don't have any anything too scary happening out here. Or the time I took the blind step into the step wasn't there. Or, wow. You know, locked myself out on a deck and had to try to figure out how to get back inside. But wait a minute, know, we got nothing we gotta, really. Wait a minute, you're just passing off like that's not that's not something worth the worth the you know uh, poking at a little bit here. So you're you're well, on. Also, that happened to everybody. <laughs> Oh, yeah, all the time. No. <laughs> so, so you're on an inspection, you go outside, you close the door behind you and you're stuck on the deck. And it locks. Yeah. It was like the third floor, oh. um, empty, it, you know, vacant beach rental house in the winter. Nobody's around. Nobody's even in the subdivision because all of these houses are empty all winter. Um, and, uh, Okay. Luckily, though, luckily the luckily the window was unlocked, so I managed oh, to get back in. <laughs> but I had to think there for a minute. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a, a long month. <laughs> well, and I, I was going to ask you about uh, a humorous thing that's happened to you as an appraiser, but I'm already laughing. So, is there anything else? <laughs> that's about it. You oh, know, it's all right. a lot of the times. I uh, like I said when I do my inspections, a lot of times these are you know vacant rental houses. Uh, people refinance them in the winter when nobody's there. So I pick up the key at the rental company and, you know, go do it and nobody's around. Um, nice. You know, it's, that sounds like the way to do it, my friend. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, I had one guy that, you know, I was walking through his house and all of a sudden my cell phone rang and he said, you know, if you look to your right, you'll see where I replaced the countertops. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, wait a minute. When I look to my right, I'm like, are you watching me? He's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. I own a security company. So I get all the good stuff. I'm sitting here watching you. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm glad I didn't use the bathroom and leave the door open. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Awesome. That's funny. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the appraisal industry. Um, you know, there's there's appraisers that are concerned about uh, where things are going. There's others that are excited about where things are going. Um, two two part question for you, Jason. Where do you see the appraisal profession as a as an industry going in the next three to five years? And where do you see you or your appraisal company specifically going in that time period? I think we're going to have more technology, but I, I don't think we're going anywhere. Um, you know, we're, we're here to stay. And, you know, in my, my area, you know, my territory is a hundred miles long and about one mile wide. <laughs> so, you know, I've got ocean front on one side and I've got sound front on the other side. If I go to Zillow and look up my house, which is kind of right in the middle, mm. you know, it, Zillow gets confused because it says, you know, the house at the end of my street sold for 700, the the house at the other end of the street sold for 1.2 mm. and then houses in the middle are selling for 200 to 300. So oh, wow. it, it just has no idea what to do. Um, they're, they're still going to need appraisers to go out and look at stuff and actually think about what we're doing. Um, now I, I've gotten, I, I see more, more need for stuff like desktops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got one client that sends me plenty of desktops and, and, you know, some appraisers say, well, you know, if you didn't accept the desktops, they, you know, they would order a full appraisal, but yeah. they wouldn't, you know, exactly. this is a, they wouldn't. this is a bank that, you know, they could use tax value or they could use an AVM, but the chief appraiser said, you know what, we want an appraiser to look at it, mm -hmm. you know, and appraiser just simply giving their opinion is going to be more reliable than tax value or some AVM that gets confused because there's waterfront property at the end of the street. So, exactly right. you know. Very good. So I don't think I don't think we're going anywhere. How about you? I'm not anyway. Long haul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't couldn't imagine having a, a better job. You I see, enjoying my job is changing at all? Maybe expanding into commercial or or something else? Are you comfortable where you're at? I'm comfortable where I'm at. 
Um, I've, I've considered expanding into commercial, but you know, I actually share an office with a commercial appraiser. Um, but he's not real busy right now and I am. So, mm, yeah, you know, good. Yeah. And it, it's kind of the yin, yin and yang as far as uh, that goes. I've talked to a lot of commercial appraisers that, uh, uh it's, it's an interesting uh, dynamic, um, that, uh, very, very different than, than the regular, uh, fee residential appraiser for sure. So, um, yeah. And there's times he's busy and I'm not. So, you know, it's just, it's just how, how the industry works, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Biggest failure, Jason, and this doesn't have to be appraisal related. Um, hmm. I don't have too many failures. Um, <laughs> Good for you. That I'm, I want your you life. Know, <laughs> I mean, I live at the beach. Everything's pretty good. Um, you know, I, I did what, you know, I mentioned earlier that I went to aviation school and it kind of fell apart when I got there. Um, now I will say that my class of 30, by the time I dropped out, there was two people left and I don't think they graduated either, oh. but that, that kind of felt like a failure at the time. Cause you know, just graduate high school, we start college and, and no, <laughs> no. so, you know, that was probably it, but, Okay. Yeah, Biggest success. Um, just getting where I am, where I am right now. I mean, I I feel like I have a pretty good reputation, and you know, I've my business is good. I've, you know, just went and got a a real estate broker's license. And, oh, is that right? What you what, know? Why? Why? Let me uh, let me just explore that a little bit. Uh, I know some appraisers consider that. I'm curious as to what your reasoning was. Um, it just seemed like something I needed to have. Um, you never know when there's something I want to lowball <laughs> and, you know, up until then my, my mom has acted as my agent and mm. if I try to lowball somebody too bad, she gets, she gets mad at me. She's like, they're going to be mad. I'm like, I don't care. They can take it or leave it. So, yeah. and, you know, it's, so it gives you an opportunity. So I assume you do a little investing on the side then as well. Uh, I have a little in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would like to in the future, you know, it, just if the right thing comes along, then it's nice to be able to, you know, call the, the listing agent say, I want to look at this and go look at it and then, you know, take care of everything yourself. Very cool. Well, you're a very laid back person, Jason. I, I'm excited to get to back on with you in just a few minutes as we uh, go through the lightning round and, and also reach out to you about uh, your one helpful tip for appraisers. First, I want to pause here and remind you we're sponsored by All Mode Software. Folks, I've been using All Mode for over 20 years. I'll tell you one of the great things about All Mode is the, it's just the little things. It's the fact that you can uh, make automatic adjustments. It's the fact that you can separate your forms and put your, uh, you know, your addendum on one side and your, uh, your appraisal adjustments on the other side. It's the opportunity to integrate so many uh, what we call apps into the uh, software itself. So you can, you can have a regression tool, you can have a uh, data master, you can have, uh, you know, so many third party apps that will actually directly interact with all the mode. It all works together for you as the appraiser to be more efficient and more effective at what you do. Folks, if you've not tried it and you want to, you want to see what all the talk is about, I would encourage you to go to all slash free trial, all slash free trial, or you can call them at 800 all mode for your 15 day free trial. Speaking of free trial and Speaking of Data Master, they also have a two-week free trial. You can go to datamasterfreetrial.com slash coach, datamasterfreetrial.com slash coach. For those of you who are not familiar with Data Master, Data Master is the opportunity to take information both from public sources and from private sources such as MLS, choose which things you want to import, and then hit a button and automatically and directly import them into your appraisal software. Folks, it will save you 60 minutes per report, 30 to 60 minutes per report. Go to datamasterfreetrial.com slash coach to try them for 14 days. Once again, it's datamasterfreetrial.com slash coach. And finally, folks, we are sponsored by Working RE Magazine. You know, just this morning, I got an email uh, from Working RE. I clicked on it and uh, read a very brief yet very informative uh, article about what's going on in the appraisal profession. That's what Working RE does for me. I am signed up for their free newsletter as well as their hard copy that comes every quarter, but on a regular basis, I get updates as to what's going on in the appraisal industry. If you care about your career, if you care about your profession, you care about where we're going as appraisers, I would encourage you to jump on workingre.com and sign up for the free newsletter. Make sure that you're on your, their mailing list for their quarterly uh, magazine as well. Again, it's workingre.com workingre.com. And welcome back, folks. We are joined by Jason Self out of uh, North Carolina or South Carolina? South Carolina, right? North. North, North. North Carolina. <laughs> it's Carolina, right? It's the same thing. Oh. 
Well, as long as you're not talking about barbecue. <laughs> exactly right. Well, I appreciate you joining us. We're uh, talking a little bit uh, with Jason about uh, his career as an appraiser. And it uh, seems like he's got a pretty laid back uh, uh, gig going on there. So you seem like a pretty comfortable guy. You know, I talk to a lot of appraisers that hate their life. You're not hating your life, Jason. What's wrong no, with you? Life's good. <laughs> good. Good. Okay. So I mean, I, I could be working at some corporate job with six yeah. bosses and yeah. you know, nine to five. On, not outside on the beach, right? That's right. All right. Good for I'm, you. I'm two blocks from the ocean right now. So oh, of course, this man, that's beautiful. And, and the, and the temperature is what? Oh, it's uh, I don't know, 85. Ouch. Okay. Uh, so one helpful tip, my friend, that you can give other appraisers in your, in your long life of, uh, of a real estate appraiser. One, one thing that you can help my listeners. Well, if, if you work for yourself, don't get too stressed out when things get slow, try to enjoy it. Cause you know, it, things will get busy and then you'll, you won't, have time to enjoy yourself. So, I love you know. that tip, man. That's one of the best ones I've ever had. Cause I'll tell you, I, I get in this mode of I'm so busy. I can hardly keep up. And so I'm stressed. Right. And then we slow down and I think, where am I, how am I going to pay my bills? And I'm stressed. <laughs> we go from yeah. one stress to another. Yeah. And, and it's hard to, to not get stressed. Cause you know, you get a week with no work. You're like, Oh my God, I'm going to have to sell my house. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to have to get a job at the grocery store, you know, <laughs> yeah, stocking I'm... shelves. But you know what? It, it gets, it, it comes back. You know, I try to enjoy my, my slow weeks and you know, and it is hard cause you get a little nervous, but well, yeah, it is hard. Had... You're right. You know, I look back on my 20 some odd uh, years of doing this. And, and if I just, if I just look at the numbers and I'm a numbers guy, if I look at the numbers and, cr and, and, and crunch the numbers, it always comes back. And so, uh, you know, why get stressed out? Right. Yeah. And if it gets too slow, just, you know, buy an airline ticket or reserve a hotel room somewhere and then you'll get more business than you want for that specific day. <laughs> and it'll have to be that day. <laughs> so, right. You know, just you're right. Look at truth. It gets, it gets it. busy. <laughs> All right, my friend, you ready for the lightning round? I sure am. Here we go. Uh, inside out or outside in? Uh, outside in. Okay. Uh, tape, roller, or laser? Tape and laser. Oh, okay. Well, you got to explain that one. Well, the, um, I mean, I love my laser, but, you know, some outside walls, it's just quicker for me to hook the tape and measure it. Uh, um, we need to talk. All right. So, uh, tape, <laughs> tablet, computer, or clipboard, and pen? Clipboard and pen. Uh, we definitely need to talk. Appraisal software? Uh, all mode, of course. Okay. Uh, favorite thing to do when you're not appraising, my friend? Uh, I like to cook. Uh, I play sax in a band. Um, really? I like to, you know, not do anything. Sometimes yeah. you just have to relax, yeah. watch TV, yeah. play with you, you know. Very good. Uh, what speed do you listen to the Appraiser Coach podcast on? I didn't know you could adjust the speed if i if i speed it up too much you sound like a chipmunk yeah no it actually you can do you can do two pretty good pretty good but 1.5 is my favorite so give it a shot uh, okay one goal for this year jason uh to get through the year <laughs> Love it. Love it. well it sounds like you got a pretty good gig going on there and i'm glad you're enjoying your life as an appraiser so many of uh, of uh, the appraisers out there are not so i think it's good to hear some good news my friend sure Jason Self, uh, North Carolina, thank you for joining us, my friend. Get out there and, uh, and create some value, my friend, and uh, appreciate you being on today. All right, Dustin, I appreciate you having me and, you know, look forward to talking to you again sometime. All right, my friend. Folks, that didn't uh, seem too hard. Uh, hopefully, you'll reach out to me, uh, the coach at theappraisercoach.com, and uh, be on the program. Uh, by the way, folks, uh, if you've not heard, uh, we do have a new membership uh, level. I know there's a lot of people that want to get into the dream team. We're pretty much full in the dream team. Uh, this is the in-person mastermind group. Uh, but there's a lot of people that want to be involved um, on a different level. Uh, they can now with the uh, Appraiser Academy. Um, if you'll ch jump on the appraisercoach.com and go to memberships um, for much less than you would pay for the, uh, the in-person mastermind, um, you can belong to the Appraiser Academy. The Appraiser Academy also includes a free membership to the all-star team, but on a monthly basis, we meet together members only uh, for a webinar, um, for the first oh, 45 minutes or so where I teach you about um, how I run my office and how you can be more efficient and more effective as a real estate appraiser, make more money. Uh, and, uh, and then of course we've got question and answer after that uh, for as long as you want to go. Uh, could be a couple hours. Of course we've got recordings as well so that you can uh, download them and listen to them in the car. That's what it's like to be a part of the Appraiser Academy. I hope you will check us out. Uh, again, theappraisercoach.com slash memberships, theappraisercoach.com slash memberships. And folks, thanks for joining us today. We'll catch you next 
next time. 